Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Spessy here. Just 24 hours ago, I reviewed 30 cards from set four. And since then, another 15 have been revealed. We are in turbo reveal season. There's like eight a day or so. So the one that I didn't catch yesterday because I'd already recorded the video is the Muses. It's an Emerald card. You guys know me, I love Emerald. Four cost inkable card with two strength and four willpower. It has ward. And whenever you play a song, you may return chosen character with two strength or less to their player's hand. This card is really, really impressive. So this is working in a similar way to kind of kick Cloud Kicker or a Mother Knows Best in terms of like a tempo Emerald deck, which is looking to bounce threats away. Now, the other thing to consider is some synergy with uh, the Stitch record player that we reviewed yesterday. I think it was a bit harsh on that card overall. I think it's not bad. But also, just the fact that you can bounce back your own cards as well, I think is really important to note. So, obviously, turn three Ursula, singing something. Mother knows best with the Muses. You know, you could bounce back two big threats and two small threats with the Muses. In theory, you can bounce back four cards to your opponent's hand in a single turn. I think another use case for this, which is possibly being overlooked, is the fact that you can even just bounce back your own Ursula um, if she's going to be getting removed. And you can play her again. That could be quite valuable in some matchups. Overall, I think this card is very, very interesting, and it will see play. Um, it's a very exciting card, that's for sure. I like the look of it quite a bit. Up next, we have Snuggly Duckling, which is a location. This is a really fascinating location. It's a two-cost inkable. It has nine willpower, and it costs two to move a card in there. No law. Whenever a character with three strength or more challenges another character while here, gain one law. If the challenging character has six strength or more gain three law instead so this is a card which is coming down on turn two and you can kind of just ignore it but then later on the snuggly duckling is just going to absolutely pop off and do the business yeah uh, scar has been mentioned by seneth scar the captain hook in particular i think is going to be good in this one as well which is like a budget scar which is good in a pirate deck obviously it's a location for john silver for jim hawkins um, wow, this card looks really, really, really exciting. I love the design of this one. The fact that it's not gaining any lore instantly and has so much, so much strength. This card's really damn cool. I like the look of it a lot. I'm next to a Brawl, another Ruby card. A, there are two ways to leave the Snuggly Duckling, the door or the window. Banish chosen character with two strength or less. Dude, this is really good. This is a really good card. Um, you can deal with the three cost Ursula with this in Ruby without needing smash uh, and, and other stuff like that. Um, this is comparable to smash, but if you think about all the things that smash hits and removes, you could make a pretty strong case to say that Brawl is just better. Maybe. Uh, most cards that have three strength, uh, three willpower, don't have three strength. Obviously, there's cards like Rafiki, but a lot of things that smash is hitting better. Uh, Brawl is also hitting. It's a really, really fascinating card for sure. I like the look of it quite a bit, honestly. Obviously, some synergy there with the Surfer, with the Stitch record player as well. Just overall, very, very cool card. I think it could see some play. Up next, we have Tor, a Florist. He's a 5-cost inkable, a 4-7 quest for 1. They say that his arrangements are exquisite. His composites and bouquets are so divine... But when the crowds try to come and visit, there's always quite a fight to form a line. Okay. Terrible card. Sorry. I mean, maybe it's not that terrible. Honestly, his stats are pretty insane. Uh, if if you, you could play him in Mill, maybe, to sing A Whole New World with, but he's probably not going to see play, if we're honest. Gunther. Interior designer, a four cost inkable, three, three, quest for two. When this character is challenged and banished, each opponent chooses one of their characters and returns that card to their hand. I hate to cover this trap door. It really puts the room together. Um, is this card good? I don't know. It's definitely an interesting one. Uh, you could bounce back. Like I, I, if I'm playing Emerald, I could maybe bounce back my merfolk or something like that or something cheap if i'm going wide for them it might be more of an issue it's kind of comparable to cheshire cat i have a feeling it's not great to be honest with you but it's definitely very interesting also someone mentioned in chat um brawl deals with flavisham which is really important uh maleficia in chat mentioned that okay we've got a bunch of uh cards i've not seen yet six cost song hello ariel 
Ariel already has let it go. How far I'll go in Sapphire. Like Amber Sapphire with Ariel is almost good. There's also Mama Odie in that deck for some turbo ramp. Return up to two item cards from your discard into your hand. Okay, so you can put two popsicles back in your hand. I mean, it's interesting. Not sure, though. Not sure on this one. Popsicle is going to be the main target. Um, you can't even sing it with Ariel, actually, can you? Doesn't seem very good to me. If it costs five, maybe. Uh, two cost Ingeval, sell them all they seem. A character with cost two or more can exert to sing this song for free. Chosen character gets minus three strength this turn. So, the big problem with this card is that it's not drawing you anything. It's a really cool artwork, by the way. My goodness. Um, minus three is quite a lot. Obviously, if you can combine that with cards like Brawl, cards like the Muses, it could be interesting. Actually, that seems like the best use case for it, right? Sell them all they seem. Uh, any th like three or less cost song, you need to consider Ursula with. So... One of the only decks, in fact, the only deck I've never actually tried with Emerald is Emerald Sapphire because the only song that Sapphire has is One Jump Ahead. This is something. Is it really going to be enough? I mean, maybe with the Muses, there could be something in there, right? You play the Ursula on three, you play, you sing, sell them all they seek with the Muses down, and then you can bounce back cards that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to hit. So that seems like some nice synergy. Fat is unlinkable, could be awkward, but also you can set up some favorable trades outside of the Muse's turn. Definitely seems like the best setup for um, Emerald Sapphire, but I'm still going to need to see a little bit more to have much faith in that deck. Lost in the Woods, a four cost song, so not singable with uh, Ursula three drop. All opposing characters get minus two strength until the start of your next turn. So. This card's kind of comparable to Kidda. Uh, obviously, it's very interesting. There's all this theme of like minus two strength. Uh, obviously, you can sing this with Ariel. It's a song that you could have with Ariel. We've seen this uh, like the Stitch record player as well. Not convinced by this one either, to be completely honest with you. It's obviously something you could try in an aggro deck, but I don't think that's going to be particularly good. Uh, interestingly, what I will say, Kidda actually impacts your own cards, right? This card does not impact your own cards. So you could still make some favorable trades. I think also worth noting that I'm pretty sure this doesn't impact Rush characters. Would need to check the difference in the wording between this and Kidda, but I, I don't believe this uh, impacts Rush characters still. I don't think this card's very good, probably. Up next, B King Undisputed, a four cost uninkable song. Each opponent chooses and banishes one of their characters. This card could be pretty good. Um, four cost card to sing is not the easiest. Ariel can sing it though. So, like an amber ruby deck with songs. This could be really nice. This card's very, very good with Ariel, actually. That's just kind of the card that jumps out. Flabbersham can also sing this. Obviously, the issue is what do you banish of your own? Um, the other thing to consider is if you're playing uh, maybe Ruby Amethyst, where you just go very wide, you could sacrifice a goat or you could sacrifice a, uh, a rabbit, perhaps. Oh, you don't banish your own. Oh, Raven, thank you. You saved the day. I mean, okay, this card's insane then. So it's like a Lady Tremaine. Okay, this card's very, very good then. You're not banishing one of your own. This is like the classic uh, wording where I'm getting stumbled by the each opponent. Um, okay, that makes things very, very different. I mean, this card's very good then. A four-cost card, being able to sing this with Flavisham in, in Ruby Sapphire sounds particularly strong. Um, Ariel, it seems strong with as well. Seems like a good card. Obviously, after a Be Prepared, it's going to be particularly strong. So if you could go be prepared, play a Flavisham if you've got like 11 ink or something in a Ruby Sapphire deck. Seems like a really cool card. So many cards. This is crazy. Uh, we've got a legendary green card. Oh my God, I'm excited. Three cost uninkable. So competing kind of for the same uh, 
Rangers Prince John and uh, Ursula to 2-2, two, two, quest for one. Shift, discard an action card. Eh? You may discard an action card to play this on top of one of your characters named Diablo. So I have to discard one of my own cards to shift this? What? That's weird. Evasive. During each t opponent's turn, whenever you draw a card while this character is exerting, you may draw a card. Huh? Right, so you don't spend any money to shift it. You discard an action card. During each opponent's turn, whenever they draw a card while this character is exerted, you may draw a card. So you play this on turn three, it's evasive and it just chills there. If they draw a card, you're kind of doing the business. Yeah, so if it quests, they draw a card, you draw a card. I mean, it's very good. What I will say is two, two strength is very, very easy to remove, right? It's a very, very easy card to remove and it's uninkable. It's a really, really interesting, uh, really, really interesting card. That's for sure. Is it good? Uh, yeah, it is. It is very good. I, I will also mention though that evasives are probably going to be very meta because of the Pegasus card, which we revealed, uh, reviewed yesterday, the one cost Emerald card, which is a 1-1. One, one. Um, there's going to be a lot of Pascals with crabs around. There's going to be a lot of uh, evasive counters. There's already lots of cards which deal two damage. Things like Baboom, things like Storm Rage on. Their kind of uh, power goes up even further. Card's very good though, right? So in theory, you could play this on turn one. You discard an action card and you play this on turn one alongside something else like a Pegasus. Imagine that. I open up turn one, I play a Pegasus. And I discard a flipping fire the cannons or something. Is that how it works? No, because I have to shift it onto a Diablo. So I'd have to... Okay. So I could play a Diablo on top... What? Is there a Diablo card already? Is Diablo this weird purple thing? Yeah, so at the moment, there's just this weird purple thing, which is not a good card. Very bad card, in my opinion. Morph as well. So you could play the morph. It needs to be exerted. So the shift part of it doesn't seem that impressive unless there's more Diablos. This card's very interesting, that's for sure. Fascinating card. I don't think it's as good as it looks, though. I think it's very good. Okay, up next we have Li Shang. Three cost inkable, three, two. Quest for one. Shift, discard a character card. Oh my god. Your characters with four strength or more get one plus law. Your characters with four strength or more get plus one law. Brother. Ah, uh, so fascinating. I mean, again, the concern's going to be, um, like, what are you shifting this onto particularly, right? At the moment, there's no shift targets, so it seems bad. It's really good late game, so maybe in like a whole new world kind of deck, for example, it could be good. Yeah, I, I think in a whole new world deck, it could be good, right? Eh, I don't know. I think it's bad. If there's like a cheap Li Shang to shift onto it, maybe. Without that, it just seems pretty bad. Olaf, oh my goodness, new shift mechanic. Three cost inkable, a 1-4 quest for two. Shift, discard an item card. And we know, obviously, there's a one-cost Olaf that's actually good. Whenever he quests... That's a weird phrasing. Whenever he quests, each one of your character gets plus strength equal to this character's strength this turn. I don't know, man. I'm kind of unconvinced by these uh, shift things. But in a green... In a purple-blue aggro deck, you play Olaf on turn one, on turn two, you discard a popsicle or whatever it might be. And then you're questing for two. He's probably just going to have one strength. So each of your other characters, I mean, e e equally, each of your other characters getting which is one plus strength is still quite good, right? Yeah, there is still like this Alice idea. I'm still not convinced by her. It's interesting. 
I'm not super sold on any of these cards outside of this guy. These shift mechanics seem a bit weird. This one seems better than this, but I'm still not sold on it. Discarding a card from hand is pretty awful, right? Because you play a, you play a one drop Olaf, you discard an item card, and then you shift this on. That's three cards from hand just to get this guy down. Do you really care? On turn two, and then bam, Madam Mim gets you. Not convinced. What is this artwork, by the way? Oh my goodness. I love it. Okay, next you have Aladdin Brave Rescuer. 3-3, three, three, quest for one. Discard a location card. Whenever this character quests, you may banish chosen item. This this seems bad. Really bad. I don't like th these, shift, these shift cards, man. Uh, I don't... I think there's even a one drop Aladdin to shift this onto. These seem bad to me. This doesn't seem bad. This seems actually good in its own right, ignoring the shift part of it. But these cards just seem kind of bad. This card has maybe some potential. It's very interesting. I think like the, the value of just three cards from your hand to get this combo is so bad, right? Like, who cares about shifting this in? Do you really want to... Like, in a whole new world deck, maybe. But do you really care? Not really. I'd rather play Benjo. Floatsum and Jetsum. Oh my goodness. Okay. Quest for two. Five, five. Discard two cards. This character counts as being named both Floatsum and Jetsum. So Floatsum and Jetsum have a lot of interesting cards. From different sets. Your character's name Jetsum get three strength. Ward two. Your character's name Floatsum gain ward. Evasive. Your character's name Floatsum, Floatsum gain evasive. And Rush, your character's name, Jetsum Game Rush. So basically, you can gain Rush, Evasive. I mean, it's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty cool. They're all purple, right? Or they're purple green. So it's purple green. And you can obviously have Morph in the mixer as well. So, I mean, that's a very exciting card. Purple green floats from Jetsum. Is it going to be good? Probably not. It's probably going to be more for fun, but super interesting, right? Super duper interesting. And yeah, this is like. You could shift this on to, to morph on turn three, right? For free, while also playing a Floatsum Jetsum. This one I'm more into. It's exciting. I think it's bad, but I think it's exciting. It's a really cool mechanic. I really, really like it. Ursula Eric's Bride. This one's going to be good. Oh my goodness. Four cost, uninkable, two, four. An Amber Ursula. Oh my goodness. A quest for two. Discard a song card. Shift it onto an Ursula. So Amber Emerald is the main one that comes to mind. Whenever this character quests, chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a non-character card of your choice. Okay, now we're talking, ladies and gentlemen. Now that is a card. Now that is a card. Why is this a card and the others aren't? Well, uh, the two-drop Ursula is already really, really good. You already want to shift this on. She also just has a pretty decent stat line, right? So you play the two cost Ursula on turn two, Prince John on turn three, and then you shift Ursula Eric's Bride on, discarding a song card. You quest, you gain two lore, they discard, you also draw. Non-character can also hit locations. Admittedly, the Ursula two drop is kind of competing for value with this one. But it's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I don't know if it's actually that good. I think it's good. It's uninkable. Um, being uninkable is kind of an issue, right? But maybe you're playing strike a good match in that deck anyway. I don't know. Very, very interesting. I think it might not be as good as it looks, though, honestly. Being uninkable, you play the Ursa on two. And then, yeah. If they have more than one non-character card in hand, sure, it's great. If they don't, then it's kind of going to be a bit janky in your hand for a while. And you're still playing three cards from your hand to get this down, but you're also getting the ability of the Ursula, the other Ursula, right? So you're playing three cards from your hand, but you're
but you're discarding two from your opponents. That's a much better value trade, right? Interesting card. Um, Emerald Amber is just lacking stats in general, so... Obviously, Ariel with... Uh, we don't talk about Bruno is an interesting one. I know you have an Ariel Singing Mermaid, rare, 4 cost, inkable, 3-3, three, three, quest for 2, Singer 7. Watch and you'll see, someday I'll be part of your world. So this is synergizing with the uh, Treasures Untold card. You can sing Treasures Untold with this Ariel. I think that's all. Be prepared, you could also sing. Are you suddenly playing that Ariel in this? Probably not. Singer 7, is that good? I mean, it lets you play Be Prepared in Amber. Is that good? Uh, mm, mm, no. Like, maybe. Maybe it is. I guess you can play the three-cost aerial. Like an Amber Ruby control deck with this card as well. With aerial three-drop. This could be okay. This could be okay. Is there any other expensive songs in Ruby? I'm not sure that there is. But be prepared. Being able to sing Be Prepared is not something to smirk at too much. Aerial 3 dropping out to Chew to Be Prepared is also interesting. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure it's great right now. Agreed. But it could be one day, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Overall, let's just do a quick kind of final review of all these cards. Um, the Muses is good. Snuggly Duckling is really exciting. I'm, I'm very excited about this card. That's really cool. Brawl, I think, is solid. Maybe not amazing. This is bad. I don't think this is very good. I think this is bad. I don't think this is great, but it's interesting in Emerald Sapphire to have some kind of song. I don't think this card's very good. I think this card's good. I think this card might be really good, actually. Respected, saluted. I love a Scar card. Diablo's gotta be good, right? Gotta be good. Apparently there's a new card that's just come out, so we'll look at that as well. Li Shang, I think, is bad. Olaf, I don't think is very good, but maybe. I, I think it's bad. This card seems terrible. This card seems fun, but maybe not great. Maybe, like, we, we might even get more float some jet some cards this, this set, right? This card, I think, is not as good as it looks, but I think it's gonna be cool. Aerial... I think it's probably not great right now. And let's see if I can find this card. Chat, link me, link me, link me. The new card. Where is the new card, guys? Sisu. Sisu, apparently. There's a new Sisu card. Where is it? Why are you telling me there's a new card and not linking me, chat? Come on, man. you got to do better than that. Reddit, are you going to save the day? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Raven and Markov. Sisu in Ruby, the final card of the day. Probably. They're coming like every hour. It's crazy. Three cost inkable. One four. Quest for two. This character gets plus one strength for each card in opponent's hand. That's kind of good. Sometimes the only way to fight the unimaginable is with the incredible. That's pretty interesting. If they have one card in hand, it's a 2-4 that quests for two. It's really not that bad. If they have two cards in hand, it's a 3-4 that quests for two, which is really, really good. This card seems good. Obviously, if you're playing like a whole new world as well, it could be nice. Um, maybe if you're playing like Mother Knows Best, Kit Cloud Kicker, Befuddle. Ooh! Ruby, Emerald, Befuddle, Kit Cloud Kicker, Sisu, Bam! Mother Knows Best, the uh, Muses... Ruby Emerald. Seems qu quite cool in that, right? Alright guys, that's the video. Give it a like if you enjoyed this far. Sometimes the only way to fight the unimaginable is with the incredible. The keyword for today's video, if you watch the whole thing, I saw you guys spamming, we do talk about Bruno. The keyword for today is... Uh, what card are we most excited for? Maybe... Uh, respected, saluted. I think this is the best card that got revealed today. Alright guys. Appreciate you. See you again probably tomorrow, I guess, for another card review. Nice one.